the first part of the show, I am pleased to be joined by the director of the Jefferson Park Daycare Center, Ms. Kalia Rouse. Kalia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Mayor. I'm thrilled that you were able to take time. I met you at the art show earlier this year. Yes. So yes. tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm actually um, originally from Englewood, New Jersey, um, but I have roots in Elizabeth. My father's from Elizabeth, New Jersey, um, and my grandmother and have a big family in this area. Um, I went down to school at uh, Ryder University in uh, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, near the capital. And I made my way back up here recently um, to become the new director at Jefferson Park. So was there an application process, Scalia? Did, what, what is your degree in that made you say, hey, I may want to do this? <laughs> well, I actually was working with the center previously. Um, I have a degree in finance, so I actually in a master's in business. So I actually came from a business background and I started consulting with Jefferson Park and then they brought me on full time to work with them. And um, you know, I just solved a lot of issues and was able to really get in there and get my hands dirty. And you know, I worked well with the staff members. So they said, you know, Kalia, you would be the perfect person for the job. So. And you said, okay. Sure. There you go. <laughs> so what, what does Jefferson Park Preschool do? Um, well, right now we have a program where we um, we have a preschool for three and four year olds of Elizabeth, New Jersey. So um, we work with the Department of Education and Elizabeth Public Schools, and um, we provide a program for students from eight o'clock to three p.m. And you know they do coloring, and we have literacy, and they learn math skills, and they work with one another, and you know we have breakfast and lunches, and they go and have playtime. So it really is a wonderful program. Um, in addition to that, we have a before and after care program where we provide additional care for parents who, you know, have a job where they're working later or they need to get to work earlier. Um, we do have those services at our center. How right early now. do you have it, Kalia? Um, we start at about 7.30. You do? Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's an early start. Oh, it is. And, yeah. and it's three and four-year-olds? Three and four-year-olds okay. right now. Um, we do have a summer program coming up where we're actually doing from two and a half to six years old from June and July in August. So. And how's that? registration going um it's going okay you know we're slowly but surely the parents and the families are coming in um but we do encourage it we've been marketing it we've been hitting the streets just letting families know that jefferson park has an awesome summer program we have an amazing staff and it's just a really fun warm place to be and uh other programs that you work with the families at all or just they drop the kids off they're on their way or how do you get the families involved or do mm -hmm. you not well, it's really interesting because I think, um, you know, traditional school settings really isn't um, too family focused. You know, it's really about the students. But I think it's unique at Jefferson Park because we really do get involved with the families. You know, I think families just feel, you know, it's a warmer environment. They're able to just come in and sit with our family workers. And we really do know a lot about our families. Um, you know, they have an introduction interview where we get information about them. And throughout the year, if anything comes up, whether they need, you know, help finding a job or help finding food or different things, we're able to point them in the right direction. Um, and I think that's one of the awesome things about Jefferson Park, you know, in the 40 years that we've been around, we've really made an impact on the family. So it's just- So how long are you the executive director now? Um, I've been for three months. So three months. Probably, yeah, so you're a little months. excited. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I've, like I said, I've been around with the program for over a year, but three months is the direction. So tell me about a typical day in Jefferson Park Preschool. Uh, the kids get dropped off and then yeah. what happens? Well, the kids come in, um, we have a breakfast and all the students get breakfast and um, then we kind of start off with so the, they all get breakfast everybody gets breakfast um, where we work with the Department of Ag Agriculture and the Child Adult Food Program so everybody gets breakfast um, then they come in and have circle time where they develop skills like literacy math different things through you know functional play and um, all of our teachers are certified they have uh, bachelor's degrees some have master's degrees um, so they're really really in tune with um, the needs of our children and they come in and they have lunch and they go out to our playground and they have nap time oh do they have nap time yeah they have nap time so um, and you always get the one or two kids who don't who, want to who don't want to go to sleep right <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can we have adult nap time? Too? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, when do the adults get the nap? I know, I know. And so um, what do you do with those one or two 
two kids who refuse to go to sleep? Well, we really just try to, you know, soothe them. We might give them a little toy to sleep with or read them a book quietly. Um, that's another thing that's amazing about our staff is, you know, we really, while we have a lot of kids at our center, we're really able to adapt to the individual needs of the child. So, you know, it's really How many amazing. students do you have right now? We have 75 students. Yeah. yeah. That's a split between three and four year olds? Yes, roughly. it is. Um, they start off three and then many of them turn four throughout the school year. So you talked about literacy programs mm -hmm. and you talked about uh, nap time. Can you mm -hmm. get into some detail about the programs? I mean, do they actually read or they go mm -hmm. through the, I mean, the art show, how does it get to that point? Um, well, we follow a high scope curriculum and that's basically set by the Board of Education. So, you know, we really focus on developing their individual skills through math and literacy and just um, functional playtime, just different aspects about that. But we have Every week, you know, I get lesson plans and teachers submit what they're learning about. So this week we're actually learning about butterflies. And so one of the classrooms actually went and they got the chrysalis and the caterpillar. So the kids actually saw the caterpillar emerge from the chrysalis. And, they did. Yeah, and they're like growing stronger. So it, it's really amazing, you know, having that uh, Department of Education funding allows us to have, you know, staff members who are very equipped to be imaginative and just come up with all different types of ideas for our children. And like you said, the art show that we had, the theme was the city of Elizabeth through the child's eyes. So a lot of the classrooms, they did all different themes. We had one classroom that focused on the restaurants and the food. So the children actually went to a pizzeria and they held the dough and they, you know, saw how it was made. and. Uh, one class did the aquarium, so you know the first submarine was in Elizabeth. It was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I was in that class, and I told the the youngster, uh -huh. I think it was a little boy, and I said, you know, if you want to see the first submarine, there's a picture of it when you walk into my office. Mm, we I have said, to come and visit. You can. You can bring the kids over. <laughs> Wonderful. There's that class that did the submarine, and as you walk into my outer office, there's a picture of that first. Submarine. It's now mm -hmm. in, in 1930. It was uh, scrapped. It was scrap used for scrap metal. Oh, okay. And eventually wound up being mm -hmm. reused in the war effort somehow in the in the mm -hmm. late 30s but the actual picture is there oh nice yeah. Yeah, the yeah, USS Holland visit. 6 oh, okay. yeah, you can bring the kids in yeah I would yeah. love that, that would be the awesome. teachers can bring the kids <laughs> in so wh what type of staff work is done at the school uh, um, well, basically, we have um, we have our teachers who really lead the curriculum for the students. So they're in charge of you know what the lesson plans are going to be for the week, and then we have our assistants, which again enforce what's being learned in the curriculum. Um, and we have um, different substitutes and volunteers. Um, through the year that I was there before and even now our volunteer involvement has just picked up so much, um, which is amazing. But because of lack of funding and um, them cutting a lot of our before and after care, um, we've had to cut back on staff, which has been a little sad, but we're trying to fundraise and really just get the word out there of all the amazing things that we're doing at Jefferson Park. Is there room for growth? Yes. Yeah. Um, we're trying, our before and after care is not full um, because of cuts, you know, um, and income eligibility for parents um, that changed. We don't have a full program, but um, we are looking to have a full program. So we're growing into having a full summer camp program um, and offering three different options for parents to qualify and get into the program and even some free options to parents, you know, if they're able to volunteer. In addition to that, there's such a demand for infant care in our um, community. Uh, we get countless calls every day from parents looking for 11-month-year-old care. Wow. And just, so we really want to expand and do that, you know, whether we expand our building up or you know, buy land next door, whatever we can do, we really want to meet that demand. So that's where my vision so is. So you seem extremely energized, very well focused. Can yes. you point to anything, one, two things that's the most rewarding part of your job? Um, well, I was thinking about that this morning and I think one of, one of the major things I do every morning when I come in is I go and visit every classroom and I just say hello. And all the children just run up to me, like literally a massive wave of children, <laughs> 15 children just run up to me and say, Miss Kalia, and they run and they hug me. And I think just that joy that they have and the fact that we create that at Jefferson Park is so amazing. I think that is just 
it just starts my day off so high because no matter how many calls or meetings I have, it's in the back of you my mind. You know, I'm thinking about I'm doing all this to make this place a better, you know, better for these children. And I think also with the families, recently I had a mom come in and she gave me a beautiful card that she had made with her daughter and she said, just thank you for the positive change, you know, thank you for just being there and listening and that was just so rewarding, you know, and it's stories like that that keep me going and just keep me being an advocate for Jefferson Park and all the work that we're doing. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come here and tape this show. Oh, no problem. And thank I, you for I, having I me. I hope to come back again, and you're welcome to bring those students in to see the first submarine. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. For Miss Kalia Rouse, I'm Chris Bolwage. Please stay with us after these messages. We're back with more about Haitian Day cultural events coming up in the city of Elizabeth. Welcome back to our city where I'm pleased to be joined for the second half of the show to talk about Haitian culture 2013 and the events coming up in the city of Elizabeth. I'm pleased to be joined by Stanley Neron of the Office of Youth and Charlene Bathless, a member of the Elizabeth Board of Education. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Now, uh, who's in charge here of the, of the Haitian community in Elizabeth? Uh, who's in charge of the events? You, you, both of you? Well, What's actually, we're, we're organizers. The team, you're organizers. We're, we're organizers. So there's nobody in charge. Martel Gerville is actually the chairwoman oh, okay. of the Haitian Flag Day Planning Committee of New Jersey. And we're here on her behalf as well. I met Martel back in February and January when she helped plan all of this. And she was a nervous wreck. I think she's got everything. She's got done. everything in order now. She's got it in order yeah. now, so. The Haitian community growing in the city of Elizabeth, stagnant, not going. Well, over the last ten years it was. So what's the size? Over, over the years, it's, it's grown. We have um, about a million here in the United States. Um, we have about uh, fifteen thousand here in Union County, you know, um, and uh, sixty thousand in the state of New Jersey altogether, you know. And it's an ever-growing population, you know. That um, especially after the earthquake, the influx of a lot of uh, Haitian families coming in. Who, uh, we've been in, instrumental in trying to help and situate to get them the social services that they need, you know, due to the tragedy. And uh, it's a vibrant community that's growing. A lot of youth are coming out of it that are becoming um, bright leaders and young leaders and they're doing great things. Speaking of bright leaders and young leaders, that he could be referring to you there, Charlene. You're young, you got elected to the school board last year. And uh, are you on the Haitian Month Planning Committee or anything? I am helping with uh, a lot of the planning that's going on this month with what's going on um, for the Haitian Flag Day. So we do have a lot of events that are going on. Um, and one of the events that we're having, uh, Senator Raymond Lesniak and myself are having a Unity is Strength happy hour towards the end of the month, which is on Tuesday, May 28th from 6 to 8. Where's that at? It's going to be at Dolce's. And we just want everyone to come out and just kind of end the month with a nice celebration and just recognize, you know, a lot of the Haitian leaders that are in the community, a lot of the Haitian people just come out and just have a good time. Now, uh, Charlene, is this, a this is after the parade, right? Yes. After the Jeopardy uh, Day. This will be that. Yeah. Yes, it is. Kind of sum it up. Type we have, yes, we have New Jersey walks on the um, 19th of May, and that's a Sunday. Hopefully it won't rain because traditionally... You know, yeah, it's always sun, rained on the Haitian, yeah, but we also have the bike ride that day. It, it, it so. rains, so hopefully yeah, we it won't also, rain for the yeah. bike ride, nor with uh, New Jersey. Well, works. knowing the Haitian luck, it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll rain after the bicycle ride. I always tease the Haitian community organizers that whatever day they pick, it's sad, but it's happened the well, last you know, the, five years, right? The good right? part is we've, we've grown since then. Right. We used to do just a Haitian flag day. Now it's an entire month. It's Haitian Heritage Month, which is celebrated nationally and also in Haiti because um, Haitian Flag Day is the 18th. So we took the month of May to basically honor all the So is there a committee? I mean, uh, is there a committee? And you say you're helping the committee. Yeah, there is a committee. The New Jersey Haitian Flag Day Planning Committee. Oh, so it's New Jersey. But is there a local committee or it's the same committee? They this service Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and they, they also uh, will work with other communities for Haitian Day events. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. definitely. Throughout uh, the state, throughout the different counties and stuff. There's a lot of so who's, whose ideas? Collectively? Individual? Whose ideas? Who pulls this together? Um, collectively, the committee comes up with a, with a host of ideas. Um, um, you know, like you have uh, May 9th, there's the, so you can talk about May 9th. Yeah, you want to so talk about the events, yeah, yeah, Charlie? Definitely. Um, you know, so being the first Haitian um, elected to the Board of Education, I felt a need to, you know, have any, a great next Board of Education meeting, which is this Thursday, May 9th. And I called Martel and I talked to her and I said, you know, how can we come together? How can we, how 
can we collaboratively work together to bring Haitian people together? And that was one of, this is how we came up with all the list of events for the month. So there is going to be a board meeting on the 9th, which I'm asking people to come with their cultural clothing if they, ha if they have it, um, just to be in support of what's going on there. We have um, one of the things that in the Haitian culture is very pro um, popular is the music. So we're going to be having Compa Night at TGI Fridays on Wednesday, May 15th from 4 to midnight. And they're raising money that will go towards the Haitian flag day raising and also the parade. Um, in addition, on 17th, the 17th. We have, we have the Haitian flag day. Uh, I announced uh, that in the beginning yeah, of the show. That's the that's a, uh, flag raising ceremony, which is traditional here in the city of Elizabeth. And you've always been a great supporter of that. Yeah, it's the 17th. Uh, mm -hmm. where we and raise then the 19th. And then on the 19th, uh, New Jersey Walks with Haiti, a uh, special event where we're actually going to do a, a procession from City Hall to Jefferson Park, where we will be renaming uh, one of the streets. I uh, believe that is Mary and Monroe Avenue after Name the, corner. the late Catherine Centillion. You right. know, and that happens on um, May 19th. And we're also going to dedicate the playground in her name. Yeah. And one of the playgrounds. Yeah. And as we all know, uh, Catherine Centillion was instrumental in um, Haitian Flag Day for many, many years and was a, uh, a founder of many initiatives and was very instrumental in the. Uh, during the earthquake. And then on the, um, I know you talked about the 28th mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the uh, Unity of Strength event. And then on the 31st, we have a Haiti commemorative event uh, presented by the United Way of Greater Union County in conjunction with New Jersey for Haiti, where we'll be talking about the work that we've been doing in Haiti and also honoring everybody who's contributed and been a part of um, the Haiti movement since the earthquake. And that takes place on May 31st at 7 p.m. at the Hamilton stage in Rawway. And that's going to, you know, end out the month. And really Charlie, really you end. mentioned that uh, native dress to, <coughs> to Haiti. Is, mm -hmm. Haiti's small, I recognize that, but is there a different dress in maybe the city or the mountains or different parts of the, of the Haitian culture, or is it basically all one? Typically, there's all, like, one kind, but there's different sections of them. There's different kinds of them, and hopefully you guys may be able to see me in one That's why I was Thursday. asking, oh, you're going to wear one. Maybe okay. I will. Oh, Something you don't like know that. yet. <laughs> <laughs> I might surprise you guys. Yeah. You never know. Is there, a, is there a, a specific dance that's native to Haiti? Yes. 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 There's different. We have the compa dance. What else? We have different compa? folklore dances, yes. um, you know, that are different, different cultural dances from different segments of the culture, you know, um, some of them religious, some of them more cultural, some of them Afrocentric, you know, majority of them are Afrocentric, but um, they're various types of dances in there. All right, that. so if you're going to wear uh, a, a, a Haitian cultural dress, then you're going to have to dance as well. Maybe I'll do a little dancing after you, because <laughs> we do have students that are going to be performing, okay. so we've been working well with um, some of the schools to do that. So you mentioned the reception following the flag raising. Uh, tell us about the reception and what's going on there. Uh, the reception at, is taking place at the library. There'll be poetry, there'll be dance, there'll be food. Um, I'll be hosting, so, you know. You'll be hosting. Yeah. Well, yeah. you got uh, you got a background in, in media events, right? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you used to manage uh, Hamburger Jones? <laughs> uh, he was manager at one point? You're good for that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hamburger, we're going to rename the show after Hamburger. I know, I know. He hasn't been on in a while. Maybe I'll... Take two weeks off or something, let him be on for a little bit. <laughs> so um, at the library, we're going to have poetry. We're going to have we're going to do a little bit of history, sh display some of the great artwork. Haiti's known for um, definitely its artwork, its food, and its and its. And its uh, can anyone music. participate in these events? Anybody can participate. No. Anybody can attend. Um, you know, we definitely want to share Haitian culture and and and, and the great accomplishments of, of Haitian Americans and Haitians throughout the diaspora. What's the reaction of the Haitian community? Did they, uh, you know, will they be there? What's the, you know. You do enough, you know, you never know when you try to well, pull you know, everybody with, together. It always what, One struggle. thing I must say about this particular um, year is it's been planned way in advance. Um, you know, a lot of people know about it. It's an entire month of events. Usually it's like a weekend of events. But this year I think we've put banded together with a, a number of other cities and counties. And, you know, the promotion has been phenomenal. And I think that, you know, the Asian community comes out in strong numbers. They support. And, you know, they're encouraged to see um, the culture being celebrated. So it's a wonderful thing. So, Charlene, uh, last week was the Excellence Parade, and it was a really good turnout. And you were there, and you were marching, and what do you think? It was awesome. It was awesome to see our students um, participate and be very prideful of their particular school and just show that to us, you know. So I 
this is my first year attending. I know, it's so your first was, year on the board. So, yeah. so um, I was very proud to see our students doing great things. Now, did you walk in the parade or did you just, did you ride in the float or did you, where where were you? I mean, I didn't, I was walking, so I didn't see we where you were. We were on the stand. We were on one of the um, uh, float floats. float stands? Yes. Yeah. We were standing on one of the floats. And then we got off at the end just to on the, take On the part. platform there, yeah. Correct. It was a well attended and the weather cooperated. Yes, it did. Which was uh, extremely uh, helpful as well. Yes, it did. So if anybody wants to contact anybody about something regarding Haitian Heritage Month, how do they get a hold of either you or whatever? Um, they can get a hold of um, Martel Gerville with the Haitian Flag Day Planning Committee. Um, most of these events are sponsored by the New Jersey Haitian Flag Day Planning Committee, and they can also go to New Jersey Planning, Haitian Planning Committee .com and go on the website to get more. Now I know East Orange does something. Do you know any other cities that do uh, things for the Haitian? Uh, the city of Newark, the city of Irvington, uh, Asbury Park, Roselle. Willingboro, Roselle, New Jersey. Um, and of course, you know our neighboring city, New York City, Brooklyn. They do a whole. They have a big parade, parade, right? They have a huge parade. Yeah. Do you guys march in the in the Haitian parade in New York? We attend. You attend. Yeah. You so celebrate like the Irish do, right? <laughs> Hang out on the side. <laughs> I want to thank the two of you for taking the time to join us on the show. I appreciate it. I look forward to celebrating Haitian cultural events on the end of May with all of you, as well as what leads up to that big day. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. For Stanley Neron and Charlene Bathless, as well as Miss Kalia Rouse, in the first part of the show, I'm Chris Bolwage. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. <laughs>